Good evening and welcome back to the public meeting for Council on Wednesday, January 18th, and we're resuming at 7.08 p.m. Uh, we have no public hearing tonight. Um, Jonathan or Chris? Uh, can we move out of camera, please? Oh, right. We have a motion to come out of in camera. I would move to come out of camera at 7.08 p.m. Thank you. We have a motion to come out of in camera. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, we do not have a public hearing. Are there any public comments that have come in at all? Okay, so our seven viewers haven't. And we have no delegations tonight. So that brings us to the consent agenda. Council, uh, you've read the agenda, you've looked through it, and um, are there any items from the consent agenda that you would want to have removed and dealt with individually? Uh, Councillor Wiley. Yeah, I'd like to remove 9.2 asset management policy and 9.5 appointment of a designated assessor. Thank you. So uh, then the wording on this would be approving the, um, approving the consent agenda as amended. Is it similar to the regular agenda, Kara? Would we word it that way? Uh, so you can list the items that are actually included within... In the consent yes, agenda? Thank okay, thank you. So, uh, Councillor Wiley. I'm ready to make that motion. Thank you. The Council adopt the recommendations of the following agenda reports by an omnibus motion, 8.1, regular Council minute meetings, November 22nd, 8.2, regular Council meeting minutes, November 24th, 8.3, regular Council meeting minutes, November 29th, 9.4, regular Council meeting minutes, no December 7th, 8.5, special Council meeting minutes, December 14th, 9.3 capital and operating carry forward and closed project policy number 1816 and 11.2.1 .1, the Wheatland Housing Management Board meeting report from November 21st. Thank you for that, um, Councillor Wiley. And all in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. That brings us now to business. 9.2 asset management policy number 1810, which is found on page 65. Can we do 9.1 first? Sorry. Sorry, everybody. 9.1, 2022 capital budget change of scope, municipal tractor and cold planer, page 62. Good evening, Donna. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. Um, as uh, I'm here to discuss the 2022 capital budget change of scope for the municipal tractor and coal planer. So when quotes came in for the municipal tractor, they were over the allotted budget amount. Also upon further review of the coal planer purchase, we discovered that the coal planer doesn't really operate as we had uh, wanted it to. So basically what it does is it grinds in a, a vertical motion as opposed to a horizontal motion, which results in more of the original sidewalk material being removed. Um, we find that uh, if we hand grind the sidewalk of any trip hazard, that uh, we remove less of the original sidewalk material. And um, it, it, when you use the coal planer, when you do it in the vertical motion, not only does it remove uh, the one side of the sidewalk, you have to remove both sides of the sidewalk. So when we talk about removing that original material. So we would like to adjust this, the scope of these purchases and proceed with the, the, sorry, proceed with the municipal tractor and include a snowblower attachment and an extension chute in place of the coal planer. The snowblower and chute will allow operations to use the municipal tractor in the winter to assist with snow removal in case of a breakdown of our loader, loader mounted snowblower. It can also be used in smaller areas, such as the alleys, in case of a significant snow event. Uh, this scope change would result in a small increase to the total budgeted amount. Um, the new tractor will also be compatible with the attachments that we purchased previously, so it allows our operations staff to utilize the attachment to conduct the additional tasks, such as stump grinding, uh, using the, I say it's a sander, but it actually doesn't do pickle mix. It's only for ice melt. So it allows us to put ice melt on the pathways, um, plus the plowing implement, and uh, would allow us to keep, continue with um, 
um, using one for plowing the pathways and sidewalks and mowing. And we also have a sweeper attachment that uh, we use to sweep pathways in the, the springtime and in the summer when there's grass on the pathways. So it does allow for more efficiency and completing of these tasks. And so I'm looking uh, for an approval to change the scope. Thank you for your presentation, Donna. For the folks at home who are watching, um, maybe a question or a comment from you as far as the difference in the price, where would the funds mm -hmm. come from? So we originally budgeted with the coal planer and the, the tractor for $187,230. Uh, with this scope change, it would be 189228 for the snowblower attachment, the tractor, and the chute. So a difference of around $2,000. Okay. Thank you. And, and um, the change is a little over, so do you have funding for that then? Yes. Okay, <laughs> yes. thank you. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Peterson. Are you ready for a motion, Your Worship? I sure am. Your Worship, I would move that Council authorize administration to change the 2022 capital budget to allow for the purchase of a municipal tractor with a snowblower and extension chute and remove the purchase of the cold planer attachment by changing the original budget amount, budgeted amount of 187230 to 189228 with the increase of $1,998, the funding coming from the Public Works Reserve and your worship, if I might speak to it. Yes. Uh, I just think that um, uh, it's a very, very reasoned uh, purchase. I appreciate it. And personally, your worship, I wish we never had to deal with these kinds of operational issues at this council table. I think Donna does too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other, are there any comments now that the motion is on the floor? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. And the motion is carried. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Donna. That brings us to 9.2 Asset Management Policy number 1810. Andre, welcome back. We enjoyed your presentation so much we called you back for more. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So um, item... The item before you tonight is the asset management policy. Oh, uh, sorry, before I begin, all of my comments will be made. <coughs> oh, yes, thank you. Okay. <coughs> so all of my comments tonight will be through the CA, uh, through the CA uh, to the mayor and, and to council. Um, so this item on the agenda is uh, for the asset management policy, policy number 1810. Um, and the reason for this policy um, is that the policy is a bridge between council's intentions and priorities and, and the town staff's actions. It is a formal and lasting statement that demonstrates the town's commitment to asset management and provides a high level guidance to staff in carrying out the town's strategic plans and activities, all with the goal of meeting and achieving uh, council's strategic plan, priorities, and vision. Uh, this policy will be a key component to the asset measurement program and is a policy uh, and will create the policy uh, for the governance framework necessary to support uh, the creation and use of asset management methodologies and an asset management plan. Thank you, Andre. Uh, questions? Councillor Wiley? Sure, thank you. I just had two questions. So on page 70 of the notes, it's policy 4.1b. And it says develop and maintain asset inventories of the, the town's municipal assets. I was wondering uh, how easy this would be to access. So for example, would it be accessible to a counselor with just a click of a button or would this require like a council inquiry and a few days to, to bring up different assets? What's the dream? Um, I should probably defer to Kevin, if you don't mind. Well, I, you know, I think, 
it ultimately depends on the platform, but but I mean, it would probably be you know a question to me or or through council inquiry would probably be the easiest way to do it. I think, um, and we would go from there. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll allow Kevin to answer the, the visionary sort of question, but in terms of of the mechanics or what the policy is speaking to specifically, um, it's the duty of of staff to um, create an inventory to have documentation as to where that's stored, who's responsible for it, who's responsible for maintaining it. Um, those, those are sort of, the, uh, when I'm looking at this item in the policy, that's what it's sort of, is, um, that's how I would interpret it, or that's, that's the intent of it. The mechanics of how uh, it should be shared is, is maybe a, a bit beyond the scope of that particular item. Yeah, I have one more question. So the policy defines life cycle costs, but then there, nowhere in the policy did I see anything about uh, making predictions about life cycle costs. So for example, if admin were to come before council and request a whatever it is Donna just requested, a municipal tractor and cold planer, it would be useful to hear some information about life cycle cost with those things. So I'm not sure how big I'm blowing this up or if there should be a policy in there about life cycle costs. Thank you, and yes, that is a good question. So that's addressed under item 4.1 K so it's the idea uh, to minimize total life cycle costs of an asset. So if there's, if there's a question as to what is a life cycle cost, then we have the associated definition. Okay, so nowhere in here though, would we say best practice is to have life cycle cost estimates at the time of purchases? Sorry, through the chair. So I think that would be part of the budget cycle. Like, so when a capital request came forward for a piece of equipment, the, the ultimate goal once this, this system is established is there'd be the capital cost. There would be, you know, we need a truck and, a, and an a, and equipment operator to come along with it and, and the ongoing annual operations and maintenance costs. And then ultimately, you know, the, um, I guess, the discarding or the decommissioning or what have you when that product's at end of life cycle because there's costs sometimes to get rid of equipment or, or as well. So that is the ultimate intent, but I'm not sure that would be part of this policy. It would be more of our, our budgeting practices or related policies around that. Yeah, it would quickly get very big, I'm imagining, if every time you had to have predictions of life cycle cost. But so... So my understanding is that was administration shares that same vision for a long-term goal. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Th those are my only questions. Thank you, Councillor Wiley. Councillor Langmaid. Thank you very much, Your Worship, and welcome back, Andre. I have a question for you. Uh, it's section 2.2, .2, letter B. I'm wondering if we ever found out what an accessible park and pathway is and whether we have inaccessible ones. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, that is uh, an error, and I apologize. We did have this conversation, I do remember, uh, that should have been uh, taken out to just read parks and pathways. So thank you for that. Thank you. I saw it in there, and I thought, oh, maybe he found an answer. Uh, so just a, just a miss, and it needs to be removed. Thank you very much. My apologies. Thank you, Councillor Langmaid. Any further questions? Seeing none, is anyone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Wiley, thank you. I will move that Council adopt the Asset Management Policy 1810 as presented in Attachment 1. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Langmaid. I just have a quick question, and that's, uh, it's just procedural. Do, do I need to make sure that I uh, make an amending motion saying to uh, to amend it to remove the accessible, or is just noting it here enough, or should I try and amend? 
Christopher? It's not a big deal, but I want to make sure I do the process right. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, so we should have uh, a motion to amend to remove that section. So basically the same, just as amended to remove section, I forget what that was, 2.2B, point. 2. 2. specifically the word accessible. Yes, that's correct. So we do we need a motion then to amend? Unless someone would like to fix their motion. Okay. Councillor Wiley, will you would you be willing to adjust your motion to include Councillor Langmates? I'll give it a try and you guys can let me know how I do. So the council adopt the asset management policy number ten, sorry, number eighteen ten, uh, with the amendment to two point two B. The removal of the word accessible as presented in attachment one. Thank you very much. Uh, you've all heard the amended motion. All in favor? Aye. Councillor Montgomery, did I hear you? Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, that moves us along to Nine point nine point five, right? I think that was. I thought he had. I just. I thought he had just. Councillor Wiley, did you ask for nine point two and nine point five to be dealt with separately? So nine point three was passed in the omnibus. Yep. yep. Nine point four was never part of the omnibus. Okay. Thank 9. you. Five, I removed from the omnibus. So we have to do nine point four. Thank you. You. Thank you all for helping me there. So thank you, we have the utility anomaly policy number 1814 and good evening and welcome tonight. No, okay. Push the right button, not the left. I've got it. Well, good evening, Mayor, or your worship and council. Going back into October, we had a number of delegations that were before council. On October 5th, we had one of the delegations that was asking for a tax penalty waiver and another one for the utility fees waiver. Since the penalties were to be uh, applied in the next couple weeks, administration brought back on October 19th the property tax relief policy. Then on December 7th, administration brought back two additional policies. The next one was our forgiveness of penalties on utility bills for hardship cases. And then the second policy we brought back on that time was the collection of accounts receivable deemed to be uncollectible and subsequently write off uncollectible accounts receivable. Now today, on January 18th, administration would like council to consider the utility anomaly policy. The proposed policy gives clear parameters to ensure that utility anomalies are given fairly and the town utility revenue remains stable. Under section three, the policy criteria, there are three criteria that must be met. One, the anomaly must be identified by the resident or the taxpayer. The cause for the anomaly must be mitigated and corrected in a timely period. Confirmation would have to be provided to the town with dates on when the correcting actions took place. And the ratepayer must approach the town. We're not just going to adjust tax or utility bills because we see that somebody has a large water usage and we notice that they have it fixed. They uh, turn the tap off or they fix the flapper on their toilet. We do want the rate payer to be coming to the town and asking for a water anomaly. The town also last summer installed census analytics um, software that helped identify where we are seeing large water usages and we can go back to the time that it was installed. So we can go back and review right till last summer, seeing where the spikes were on any water meter. So this will also 
assist administration on being able to track the water so we can't say, oh, well, uh, your worship, you had a family of five visit and stayed with you for a month and we saw huge water usage. It's normally a short period that we see it. We normally see a water leak that has happened, a, a water softener, a toilet flapper, um, and normally residents do correct these actions fairly quickly. One thing with this policy is they have to come back within a timely period, within 60 days of the billing cycle on the due date. So you can't come back and say, oh, well, in August of 1919, or 2019, I had a huge water bill, and I'd like this corrected. It wasn't done within a timely fashion, and this would allow administration to deal with these things before they actually got brought towards council. So we're hoping that this is our final policy to be able to allow administration to rectify some problems without them coming to council. Does anybody have any questions? Are there questions from councillors? Councillor Wiley? Is there anything in the policy, um, just to outline that it is for a ratepayer's first anomaly? And what I mean is, is could they could they continually have problems over a, a short period of time and continue to get relief? Or should we put some kind of a restriction? Or do other municipalities have some kind of a restriction on great player pairs who seem to have ongoing problems or ongoing anomalies? We could amend this policy to say that it can only be used once in a 24 month period to ensure that we don't have reoccurring uh, rate pairs coming back. So we could amend this if you'd like. Well, I'll leave that for the debate period, but um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wiley, Councillor Langmaid. Thank you, Your Worship. I have a quick question just uh, regarding uh, the ratepayer has approached the town in writing requesting relief. Uh, it, would it be clear to the ratepayer who it is that they need to reach out to to make sure that they're contacting the right person? Because, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm When I say email the town, I'm not sure who I'd email. And I'm worried that a ratepayer might not know. We can ensure that it is on our website clearly that it goes strictly to our utilities department. So it would be specifically the utilities department that they would be contacting for the yes, relief? Yes, and that would be within the finance area, not our operational utility Correct. people. Thank you. That was my only question. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Deputy Mayor Peterson? Just a clarification. Just a clarification following... Um, it, it is the senior manager of financial services who's responsible for the oversight. That is correct. So that, so that will always be understood because it's so clear in the policy itself. That is correct, yes. Yeah. I, Your Worship, do you want a motion? Are you ready for a motion? I would move that Council adopt the utility, utility anomaly policy number 1814 as presented in attachment 1. And Your Worship, I just really appreciate the fact that that this administration and senior leadership team consistently bring forward to our community through our agendas um, lenses of economic, social, and environmental sustainability. Um, I, I really think that that's an important uh, growth aspect for our community, and I'm very appreciative that they bring that lens to to the work that we're doing. And I really appreciate the sensitivity in in this um, in this particular policy. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for the motion. And now that we have a motion on the floor, Councillor Wiley, did you want to um, bring forward your uh, potential amendment that deals with the 24-month period? Sure. So I'm wondering if under policy criteria 3.1, there should be a D that says this is the rate pair's first anomaly in a 24-month period. May I ask a question for clarification, Councillor or Mayor? Yes. Councillor Wiley, are you saying then that that it would just be an indicator and it would still leave the 
the um, decision making in the purview of the senior manager? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I just think that if there's a case where a certain rate payer just cannot seem to get things together, it doesn't make sense for Strathmore taxpayers to be punished paying for the, let's say if it's a continuous, a continuing anomalies, um, I, I would hate to see the, the taxpayers of the town punished for that instead of the rate payer who's making the ongoing errors. Thank How you. Feel thank, about that? thank you. Um, any comments on that, Councillor Wagoner? Did you have a comment? Yeah, I just have a comment. Um, if it was an ongoing thing, or more often than one, would it not be? It, it wouldn't be considered an anomaly. Um, yeah. Yeah. You calling me a moron? <laughs> oh, and uh, and again, the um, to me the the. Um, the decision is in the, the senior manager of financial services to make that decision. So if it's something that's ongoing, um, really, I, I, I don't think it's necessary in the, um, in the, in the bylaw. That's just my thoughts. Thank you for that, Councillor Wagoner. Councillor Wiley, does that, um, does that help you as far as... Um well, possible. my preference would be that it's a criteria for the senior manager to consider. So, so I shouldn't have used the word ongoing anomaly, but clearly if in January of 2023, someone has this anomaly, they're forgiven. And then in January of 2024, they have the same anomaly. Perhaps it's from carelessness. In that case, I would want the senior manager of financial services to consider that as part of the criteria when they're considering the forgiveness of that. Councillor Wigener. Okay. So in, in essence, Councillor Wiley, are you, are you thinking that that would actually provide the senior manager with some protection as far as not having to make a decision because it it's a second one within that period of time? Well, they would certainly take that into account. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Langmaid. Thank you. I have a quick question for Councillor Wiley. Um, is your intention to make it so that a, a single rate pay, a single rate payer I, I understand you don't want a single rate payer coming forward for uh, repeated issues, but I'm wondering if that wording might cause an issue where you have a rate payer that might own multiple properties. Mm -hmm. So you have an issue at one property, but not at the other, and then maybe a second issue at a different property. So I wonder if it's, is, do we want, is it the rate payer that we would want to put the restriction on or, or the property? you know, per property. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but just a, a thought I had. What does it mean? Think about that. Yeah, certainly it's my intent that it's the property and not the rate pair. Is there a better way to pro to word that then? This is the rate pair's first anomaly at that property in a 24 month period. Chris, do you have any uh, comments there? Um, thank you, Your Worship. My thought would be if if we want to go forward with this, it would be better to defer this to a future meeting, um, just so then that way there's more time to make the consideration. You know, if council votes in favor of deferring it, then that will happen, or if they vote in favor of the motion. So that my, would be my recommendation to Councillor Wiley would be to, uh, rec or to defer the motion. Yeah, I, I, Discussion. I prefer that because I do have another question that may end up in, in what could be an amendment. So let's deal with this one first. Um, so then, I'm sorry, I didn't. Sorry, sorry am I speaking with Leanna? You are. Yes. My apologies, I had to, I had to check. Um, so is it my understanding then, Leanna, that if I've mentioned that if this were to come back to council, that would be uh, potentially on there for discussion? Administration could have this uh, policy criteria D added, and then you guys could 
discuss it. Okay. Thank you. So uh, you would just need some direction then. And, and are you receiving enough direction for that one aspect that Councillor Wiley is mentioning? I have enough direction. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Langmay, do you have a, another one that you wanted to? Or oh, I'm sorry, Your Worship. I forgot to lower my hand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Councillor Wagoner. I'm 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 still I'm still on section D. I really don't think it's um, it's necessary. And you had mentioned carelessness. So if somebody leaves their water on, um, as an act of carelessness. I mean, that's got to to me that would be an obvious no go for that. So again, I just I will support the A, B, and C. I just don't know about a D um, amendment. Well, I guess uh, if, if uh, Councillor Wiley puts forward a motion to defer, it doesn't really cost us anything, it doesn't, doesn't impact us negatively if we take a look at this again and then he can bring forward or direct the administration to have that item put on and then we can discuss and, and, and either support it or not. Does that make sense, Kara? Kara? Um, so ultimately it's council's purview, but my, my recommendation would actually be that you refer probably to a committee of the whole is probably where it's most appropriate. Um, I do want to, I guess, just remind council that there are people that are actually waiting for a decision on this as well. And so that's actually part of why we brought this forward straight to council. So, I mean, ultimately, again, it's, it's council's purview, but I just want to remind you of that, that there are residents that are waiting for an answer on this as well. That's a good point, Kara. And, and Councillor Wiley, your, your motion um, as far as having it deal with a specific um, address or a specific property, uh, that's a fairly simple, clean motion. And, and if we feel comfortable with that, we would pass it. And if we don't, we would leave the, the motion. Um, we would defeat that motion. So I, I don't think it's one of these ones where we need a lot of time necessarily then if it's a, if it's a straight, simple uh, um, amendment. Um, Councillor Mitzner. I'm in support for what's been presented and I'd like to make a decision this evening rather than send it back to administration and it's, it will cost us time and energy for our staff. Thank you. Thank you for that. Councillor uh, Wiley, would you like to uh, repeat your amendment or amendment well, motion? Okay, well, let me complicate things first. I, I, I like to muddy the waters before we try and clean them. So. There was another question I had that I, I think uh, I, this one's for council. Then this question is for council. Um, do we think that it's fair that the ratepayer has no extra pay or penalty? So if I what I mean is let's go to the policy statement itself on page eighty one. The end of the policy statement says that the basically the consequence to the rate pair will be to an amount equal to the average monthly water consumption over the previous two years. So essentially the rate payer will just pay their average amount. I, I wonder if that's fair. I wondered if it should be more like the average of their three peak months or something even simple. What about just a small administrative charge at, at some kind of a penalty for, for this so that the rate payer is paying their fair share. It, it says that it's for fair and equitable manner, but is that fair and equitable to the rest of the taxpayers in town, or I should say the utility pay, payers in town, if if there is no, no consequence for the anomaly? So even maybe in a small administrative charge of $100. Thank you for that. Uh, I have Deputy Mayor Peterson and then Councillor Mitzner. So going going back to to the uh, clarity that Councillor Wagner brought to this, I, I I really see that there's a commitment in the request for decision that speaks to fairness, justice, and public interest, and I trust that. And then I see in in four point one that on on page eighty two that the senior manager of financial services has oversight. And so when I look at that in its entirety, and there is a, an understanding of what constitutes an anomaly, they, they are making those decisions not, you know, they're making them within a policy, underneath an umbrella of responsibility. And so I think that it's 
okay the way it is. And I'm also mindful that, you know, of, of making this tonight because our ratepayers are waiting for it. And I also kind of feel like, you know, this is where we get into the weeds and I appreciate the discussion. It's, it's useful to think about, but I also think that I'm in a George Carlin International Dateline conundrum conversation. Um, and I know that most of you are too young to understand that. But uh, I would be very much in favor of, um, of what uh, Councillor Mitzner said and just accept the policy and um, wait and see how it rolls out. And uh, when it comes around next year, we can get a report from our senior manager of financial services. And, uh, and, and if we see that there are anomalies within the anomalies, we can uh, revisit it. Thanks, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Mitzner. Based on the definition, I don't think you can charge a taxpayer a fee for something that's not standard, not normal, or expected. Thank you. Thank you. So we had an original motion. Uh, Councillor Wiley, do you, did you want to present your amending motion? Well, why don't we see if this passes or is deferred, and then I can make a okay. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Peterson, would you mind reading that original reading motion? Yeah. I can't even look. As soon as I find it. There you go. I would move that Council adopt the utility anomaly policy number 1814 as presented in attachment one. Thank you. So we have that motion. We've had discussion. Does anyone else want to be heard before we put it to a vote? <laughs> okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So, Councillor Langmay, just to clarify, your hand went up really close to Councillor Wiley. Did you, did you vote in favor of the motion on the floor? In favor, yes. Okay, thank you. So that motion is carried then. Thank you, everyone, and that was good discussion. We move now to 9.5, the appointment of designated assessor, request for decision, RFD 23-002. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. On December 22nd, Council had appointed Wild Rose Assessment Services as a designated assessor for the Town of Strathmore, effective January 3rd. I've now had further discussion with Municipal Affairs, and when we appoint a designated assessor from the company, we are required to name the head assessor for the company. So with this report, I am asking Council to appoint Rod Visky from Wild Rose Assessment Services as a designated assessor for the Town of Strathmore effective January 3rd and rescind resolution number 387.12.22. So this was an error on my part and I'm coming back to clean this up. Thank you. Does council have any questions? Well, Councillor Wiley? Um, yeah, I just, previously then we had a full-time in-house assessor. What's the advantage to, um, to hiring someone from outside the organization? In the fall of 2022, our appointed assessor had given the town of Strathmore his resignation as he was moving on to another organization. With knowing the availability of assessors in the province of Alberta, the likelihood of us getting another assessor to join our assessment team could take upwards of a year and a half to two years. So we had gone out to test the waters with, through an RFP and we have one proponent that has responded. Um, I will be coming back at the next council meeting to have um, basically the pros and cons of all of that. Um, basically what we are going to see is we're going to see a significant cost savings um, on the dollars. There's always going to be negatives of not having somebody here in the office, but um, we do feel very confident with appointing Wild Rose Assessment Services um, to be our appointed assessors. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wiley, and thank you, Liana. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Thank you. So this position would be a contracted position? This is a contracted so position. So we, in essence, the town would, would save on benefits and 
That is correct. Okay, thank you. Wages and benefits, thank you. So any more questions? Councillor Wiley? Just I'm ready to make a motion. Thank you. Ready? You bet. The council appoint Rod Visky from Wild Rose Assessment Services as the designated assessor for the town of Strathmore effective January 3rd, 2023. And the council rescind resolution number 387.12.22. Thank you. And now that we have that motion on the floor, is there further discussion? Councillor Wegner? Yeah, um, just one, a couple of questions. So is the plan to hire a full-time assessor eventually in the future? Uh, through, the, through the chair at this point, no. No? Okay. And so this um, Rod Visky with Wild Rose Assessment Services, he would be under, um, would, would he fall under your jurisdiction, Kevin? Or who, I, uh, No, he'll report into finance. To finance. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wagner. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. That was a forceful aye, too. Thank you, Councillor Montgomery. Thank you, Leanna. That brings us to bylaws. 10.1 Tax Arrears Payment Plan Bylaw Number 23-06. Well, good evening again. <laughs> so our tax clerk, Kim Johnson, had brought a neighboring communities bylaw to administration to, for consideration. She says, right, what we previously had is just our TIP or our tax installment payment plan. So that was only to make arrangements with our residents to do basically 12 equal payments of the current year taxes to help not only the resident manage their cash flow, but also the town's cash flow because then we're getting monthly tax payments. The tax arrears payment plan would allow administration to uh, go into agreements with uh, people that are in arrears with their taxes. So this is very important for our residents because we never ever want to be in a position where they get to a point where we have to go to tax sale. It's a lot it's painful on the resident. It's a lot of work for administration but we never want to see a resident lose their home. So we, administration feels strongly that we should work with our residents to be able to make arrangements to go into an agreement over a 24 month period on any of their taxes that are in arrears. So this is another policy we're bringing forward, or actually this is a bylaw that we're bringing forward that will allow administration to enter into these agreements. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Mitzner, then Deputy Mayor Peterson. So is this similar to the previous bylaw where the taxpayer will come to the town requesting this arrangement or you're going after the taxpayer offering the arrangement? This would be the taxpayer coming to the town to make arrangements. Um, we're not going to phone Jim because we know he's in arrears. Mm -hmm. But when they he, Jim phones the town and says, well, I now know that we can go into an agreement to settle up our my taxes. What are my options? And we so now are we have ability to go into an, an arrangement. Yes. So will this be brought to the public's notice, or will it be put in with the tax notice, or something? Um, yes, um, I actually just did an interview with Strathmore now last last week on our tip tip payment mm -hmm. plan. And that was one of the things I emphasized with the Strathmore now is currently right now, all we can do is the current year taxes, we can go into an agreement with you and make a payment plan. So taking it over 12 months. So we estimate what your taxes are gonna be. We are divided by 12 and this is what you pay us on a monthly basis. But okay. with this bylaw, this would allow us to make go into an agreement for any of the arrears. Can we put it in print somewhere versus the radio, please? Absolutely. Okay, I can work you. with communications with that. Thanks. Deputy Mayor Peterson and then Councillor Langmaid. I just want to say again, just to iterate that, that, that how, how this administration brings forward bylaw uh, under the uh, strategic priorities 
and how this council is moving forward in a really, really difficult time. Um, I really appreciate that, that um, understanding that uh, these are strange times and difficult times and uh, that every effort is being made to balance public interest with, with um, sensitivity and understanding of individualized strife. And I'm, I'm extremely appreciative of how you have um, managed to find that delicate balance. Any other questions, Councillor Langmaid? Thank you, Your Worship. I do have one question, and that's uh, just to make sure that I understand uh, how penalties are considered in this. So I know that there's there's the tax arrear, and then there's the penalties that you accrue while your taxes are in arrears. So would the pe would current penalties be included in the pay repayment plan, and would they? How would that um, apply for any future penalties on remaining outstanding payments? Or are they still collecting penalties while they're through this plan? I wasn't quite clear when I read through the document. Through the chair, um, they would, we would still be calculating the penalties within their payment structure. Um, we do need to ensure that the town is collecting their revenue. And just because you make an agreement with us doesn't mean that you always get off on penalties. In the TIP program, because you are paying your current taxes, that is when it makes you um, penalty exempt for the current taxes. But with the TAP payment or the tax arrears payment, you would still get penalties within those periods. Okay. So you get a plan, but you're still kind of Part of it's going to the penalties that you're st still accruing. Okay, uh, but you wouldn't need to say if you, and I'm just gonna throw numbers out there, say you had a $2,000 bill and $500 of it was penalties, you wouldn't have to pay the $500 in penalties up front to be able to go into the TAP program. No, you would not. Okay, and the second question I have uh, is just around uh, kind of the same idea of uh, ultimate responsibility that we discussed uh, for the last decision that we made was that it, you know, it fell to the senior manager of financial services. Is that, is that the same, uh, you know, level of responsibility for decision making here? Very similar. It would be myself or a delegate, which I could uh, delegate to um, our manager of financial planning, budgeting, and analysis. Um, our tax clerk would do all the calculations, and either myself or a delegate would be able to approve it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor Langmay. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Your Worship, I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw number 23-06, being the tax arrears installment payment plan bylaw. Thank you. You've all heard the question. All in favor? Aye. Motion, that motion is carried. Councillor Wegener. I move that council give second reading to bylaw number 2306, being the tax arrears installment payment uh, plan bylaw. Thank you. And now that we have a motion for second reading, is there any further, dis is there any discussion on that as opposed to questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. That motion is carried. Councillor Wiley. I'd like to move the council give unanimous consent to proceed with third and final reading of bylaw number 23-06 being the tax arrears payment plan bylaw. Thank you, Councillor Wiley. All in favor? Aye. That motion is carried. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Your Worship, I would move that council give third and final reading to bylaw number 23-06 being the tax arrears installment payment plan bylaw. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. That brings us to 10.2 2023 Supplementary Assessment Bylaw number 23-07. Hi. It's Welcome me back. Again. So, this is our annual bylaw that allows our appointed assessor for the municipality to determine new value or value of the new improvements added to this since. December 31st, if a 
in the previous year. With this, the assessor can assess improvements added to the land after December 31st on the condition date and collect property taxes on on to and it have administration impose taxes partially on the partially developed or additional buildings constructed through the year. Any questions for Liana? Councillor Wiley? Sure, thank you. Um, what would be some examples of of supplementary things that would add supplementary taxes for improvements? So this would be say in January when we send out our assessment notices, we have a new development and it's strictly bare land. And then they start developing a home on the property and it gets completed say in the fall of that current year. So then we would be able to send out in this, a supplemental uh, assessment notice and then charge property taxes on the prorated amount from the time of the bare land to when the property was developed. And so what would happen now without this bylaw? We would not be able to charge progressive uh, property taxes on any assess supplemental properties. So we have done this for the last, I'm going to say, decade here. And this is just a reoccurring bylaw that we have to bring back to council every year. Oh, I see. Thank you, Councillor Wiley. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Are you ready for a motion, Your Worship? I would move that council give first reading to bylaw number 23-07 being the 2023 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thank you, you've all heard the motion, all in favor? Aye. That motion is carried. Second motion, Councillor Wegener. I move that council give second reading to the bylaw 23-07 uh, being the 2023 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thank you, and now that we have a motion for second reading on the floor, is there further discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. Oh, Councillor Mintzner. I would move, move that council give unanimous consent to proceed with third and final reading of bylaw number 23-07, being the 2023 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor uh, Montgomery, would you like to do a motion? <coughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Um, Councillor Montgomery, blink twice if you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a little rough here. Um, so am I doing third and final reading, sorry? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. we are. Okay. Uh, I will give, I will, sorry, I will move the council to give third and final reading to bylaw number 23-07, being the 2023 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thank you. All in favor. Councillor Montgomery? Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, yeah, I vote in favor of that. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, we move now to 10.3 bylaw number 22-07, repealing bylaw number 23-09, page 103. Surprise, it's me again. I feel like this is a budget meeting right now. So in early 2022, council passed a borrowing bylaw number 22-07 in the amount of $537,000 for a 15 year period to fund two capital projects. On November 2nd, in an effort to reduce our debt payments, we had brought back a report to having council change the funding source of those two projects to fund them through the MSI capital Pro grant program. So on November 22nd, or November 2nd of 2022, Council authorized the use of the MSI grant funding for these two projects, which is now 
caused the need to eliminate this bylaw, and we need to be able to repeal it and then do proper advertising. Thank you for that uh, explanation. Any uh, councillors have questions? Then I'm looking for a motion, Deputy Mayor Peterson. I would move the council give first reading to bylaw number 23-09, being a bylaw to a bylaw to rescind borrowing bylaw number 22-07. Thank you for that motion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And a second motion? Your Worship, I would move that council direct administration to advertise bylaw 23-09 prior to second reading. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. That brings us to 10.4. 2023 operating line of credit bylaw number 23-08. So good evening, your worship and council. The town of Strathmore has had an operating line of credit for a number of years and never actually had to use it, which is phenomenal that we've been fiscally responsible with our cash. As administration has been reviewing our financial practices to ensure that they align with our municipal government act, this is the contingency approach to support the town's existing line of credit, but it does require us to pass a bylaw to comply with legislation. This will be an annual bylaw that we will be bringing back to council to pass. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Any questions for Leanna on this, on this bylaw? <coughs> Sorry. I have Councillor Wiley, then Councillor Mitzner, then Councillor Langmaid. Thank you, Leanna. My question is just, what's the advantage to having a line of credit over our current reserves? Our line of credit would actually say we had to pay a debt payment or pay a utility bill or pay payroll, and we needed to go into um, a negative balance in our in our bank account, the line of credit would cover that, even if it's only for ten dollars or fifty dollars. We don't ever want to be in a position where we get something returned from the bank, um, not being able to make payments. So this just makes it more efficient and uh, allows us to continue to have the lights turned on. Thank you. Councillor Wiley again. Did I see though, I could be mistaken, did I see that the line of credit is for $770,000? That is correct. So more than just 10 or $50? Well, I'd never want to be in a situation where um, we only have a $10 line of credits. Um, right now the bank has offered and has offered us the $750,000 for a number of years. Once we get our uh, financial statements uh, reviewed by the bank, we can actually have them review it to see if we want to increase our line of credit or reduce it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wiley, Councillor Mitzner, and then Councillor Langmaid. So does this have to come back to Council on an annual basis only because each operating year is different? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Langmaid. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I see here uh, in section 2.1 under purpose uh, that the total principal sum owed to, oh, I scrolled too far. No, the ba Bank of Nova Scotia at any one time shall not exceed the sum of 770,000 uh, oh, dollars. $770,000. Yes, right. but then further down in 5.1, I see that it says the principal sum owed to the Bank of Nova Scotia at any one time shall not exceed the sum of $4 million. Thank you for that correction. I can make that adjustment on the bylaw. That's an error on my part. So it should be 770 then? Yes, it should be 770. Okay, thank you. Um, the second question I have is that in the, uh, the request for decision, under general, it says uh, once, uh, once taxes are collected, any use of the line of credit 
will be paid back immediately, which I assume means within the same calendar year. Yet in the bylaw, I see here that it says that all sums borrowed under this bylaw, including principal and interest, shall be paid, shall be for a period of three years due and payable in full by December 31st, 2026. So is this meant to be for one year or do we want to, are we intending to limit ourselves to a year like it says in the RFD or are we intending to give ourselves more breathing room for three years? Our bank has said that we can pay it back up to three years because anything over three years, we would actually have to do advertising according to the MGA. And just like we did with the $537,000, it would be more for capital and not short-term bar borrowing. But our intention is to own, is to never borrow for more than one year from what I've read in the RFD. That is correct. Okay. Uh, per personally, I think I'd like to see, uh, I know we're not at the point where we're uh, uh, accepting amendments, but I, I think I might want to see that just uh, match up in reflection there. But if we intend for it to be a year, Let's make it a year. Um, I believe at this time, those are the only questions I have. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is anyone prepared to put a motion on the floor? Deputy Mayor. Your Worship, I Sorry. Sorry. Councillor Wiley. Um, so I'm just interested in Melissa's and Councillor Langmaid's potential amendment. Uh, what does administration think about it if the bylaw limits them to paying it off in one year? I understand that's their intent, but if the bylaw stated that, how does administ what does administration think about that? It's a buffer. Um, I don't ever want to be handcuffed to the point where we've had to use the $770,000 and we have to pay it immediate within the next six months or eight months. One year could be tight. I'm hoping that we're never in a situation. I'm hoping that we will be bringing back a number of policies that will help not only yourself, but the administration on looking at reducing our debt and making us more fiscally responsible. Um, I can live with one year, I would prefer three. All right, I'm I'm ready with the motion. Thank you, Councillor Wiley. No, I'm not. I've lost it. Never mind. If someone else is ready. <laughs> yep. Your Worship, I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw number twenty three zero eight, being the twenty twenty three operating expenditures line of credit borrowing bylaw. Thank you for that motion. All in favor? Aye. And a motion for second reading. Councillor Wiley. I'm ready this time. The council gives second reading to bylaw 23-08, being the 2023 operating expenditures line of credit borrowing bylaw. And now that we have second reading motion, is there any discussion or comments? Deputy Mayor Peterson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just, I believe that uh, relevant to uh, Councillor Langmaid's good catch on the four million, that was great. But in relevance to the one versus three years, I certainly hear the senior financial uh, officer, and I think that we have that oversight, plus we have the laws uh, governing us through the MGA, and I, I think that uh, it is a reasoned uh, process to leave it under the three years, and um, I am uh, voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Kara, did you want to weigh in? Um, not from the, an amendment perspective, but just so that council is aware, kind of moving into um, into the following motions that we will have to potentially recess once you've dealt with this matter, um, just so that we can get you the full text if you do wish to proceed with third and final. Sorry, I couldn't hear that last part. Oh, my apologies. It's just that um, if you want to move forward after this potential amendment, um, that we'll, we may need to recess just so we can get council the full the full text as required under the MGA. But there is no amendment, is there? There's still amendment. There is with, with the four million, the changing the four million and thank you, Kara. And so we we shouldn't move we shouldn't move third and final until 
We recess. So you can go ahead and make your your amendments, and then what yes. we'll do is, is what we would recommend is the council take a, a brief recess. We will just quickly update the bylaw. We'll get that to you so that you have the full text so you meet your legal obligations. So making a, an amendment in this second reading is rational then. So, Your Worship, I would move that we give second reading to bylaw 23-08 with the amendment noted on page 114 of 120 being of of, of, uh, of the of changing four million to seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars and that that would be the 2023 operating expenditures line of credit borrowing bylaw thank you for that motion with the amendment you've all heard that uh, discussion on that are we good all in favor? That motion is carried. Oh, that, sorry, that motion is carried now. And now we need a motion to recess after this amendment. Okay. Move to recess, Your Worship, at Thank you. 8.15. Thank you. All in favor? For how long? I, I would move that we move to recess for 10 minutes. Yeah. Thank you.